If you recall in the last video I did on working on the brake system on this 300D, I was sitting here banging away on the tire with a two pound hammer. Well, I got the tire off, then I had to bang on the rotor with the two pound hammer because the rotor was stuck to the hub. And then I pulled uh, the rotor off and you will not believe what's inside. I think that people not real familiar with Mercedes-Benz and the engineering of the brake system are not aware that there's a very important part inside this rear rotor and it's missing. <laughs> At least most of it's missing. This is supposed to be a brake shoe, folks. This is your parking brake. So when you push on that pedal, the shoes expand and they grab a hold of the inside here and you can see that's all rusty and gouged up. So what's funny is there's not any pad left on either side. So if you've got one of these old Mercedes, now this is typical on these cars from the late 60s right up to the early 90s. They use this style of parking brake or emergency brake. You know, if it's not working and, it, and you have to push really hard to get it to stop, I suspect this problem right here. And I think there are two reasons why these never get changed. Number one is lack of awareness. And number two, it isn't a particularly easy job unless you have a special tool that I'm going to show you now. Here's what a replacement brake shoe looks like. And of course you can see that the entire shoe is missing and the steel plate is still there. But both these shoes are held on by four springs. You've got two that are right in here. You got one at the top and you got one at the bottom. And these springs are a real bear sometimes to get off. And that's when we decided to come up with a very special tool which will allow you to get these springs off and back on without pulling your hair out. And I'm going to get Jerson out here. We're going to do this job and I'm going to film it while he goes through the process of getting these off and getting the new ones back on. As I said, I think changing these rear parking brake shoes is, is kind of painful if you haven't done it before. And so we're going to tackle these because they have to get changed. But anytime you're doing any brake work, I've said this before in my videos, get some soapy water. Hot soapy water is even better than a brush. And brush down the whole brake system and work on it wet. You do not want to be breathing the brake dust. So even before you start taking parts off here, we're going to take and soak this whole thing up with soapy water and then start removing those springs on the brake shoes. <laughs> You'll notice how dirty the water is, but you're not trying to make it clean right now. You're just trying to get it so you can work on it safely. Just take a cup and, and rinse it off a few times. And once again, you're going to work on it with it wet. There's a little slot in the plate behind that shoe that the spring goes in, so you got to kind of fish for it. And you can imagine trying to do that without this tool. Once you locate it, you push it in, turn it, and you can pull that spring out. Uh, the next step is to turn that emergency brake adjusting screw all the way in. Get rid of all the tension on that spring. Then using the tool, get a hold of the edge of one of the shoes and pry up on it and remove the adjustment mechanism. The top spring uh, comes out fairly easily. You're going to use the tool now to get down on that lower spring and try to get a, a hold of it with the spot. And there you go. See how you pull that back and disconnect that lower spring. And you're going to repeat the same thing on the other side with the other shoe. Here's a little tip that Jerson said, hey, be sure and tell people to do this. And that's true with working on a lot of different brake systems. When you take the parts off, put them in the order with which they came off so you can keep track. Take some pictures with your phone if you have to because these shoes cannot be turned around and put on upside down. And you're going to have a real problem. So you can see how this spring works with this tool. We're going to do it without the shoe installed. If you look on that backing plate, there's a very small slotted hole and you have to put the end of the tool in the spring and then turn it 90 degrees to get it to lock in 
to that little slotted hole right there. Once those brake shoes are out, now you can do a thorough cleaning in around that backing plate and around the hub. Now, we're going to clean the rust off this hub here that you saw earlier, but we're going to do it with it wet because you do not want to be breathing all that rust dust either. Notice what I'm using here. I like a variable speed drill with one of those heavy, like, it's like heavy, heavy scotch right. And when you do this, you want to be very careful. Be very gentle with the steel on that hub. You don't want to take off excessive metal, but you want to clean this enough so the rust is gone. Otherwise, the wheel and the rotor may not fit up true to the hub. And you keep rinsing it. Kind of see how well you're getting the rust off, particularly that outer edge and along that center part of the hub there. See how nice it is to do this wet, not have to breathe all that rust dust that's floating around the shop. Use that low speed. Keep them splattering all over the shop. Okay, this is what you want. Don't get too aggressive. You're not trying to take metal off, but you want that surface, the flat mating surface, clean. Hopefully you're going to get to see now how we use this tool to get these new springs in. And even though the tool makes it really easy, it's not as easy as you think. You've got to make sure everything's lined up. You've got to turn it 90 degrees, make sure it's in that slot hole. Imagine trying to do that with a pair of needle nose pliers, which is nearly impossible. And the old factory tool they had didn't work much better. Well, there you have it. The new parking brake shoes are installed. I'm sure if some of you out there viewing this have done this job, you know what I meant when I said this is going to be a little bit of a hassle. But I'll tell you, this tool is, is really a frustration saver. And we're not done yet. We've got the new shoes installed. Let me show you up close here kind of what these look like once they're installed. You notice here how these shoes float, and they're supposed to do that, so they're kind of self-adjusting. But there is a star nut here that allows you to adjust uh, the shoes, and that's going to have to be done before this is, uh, job is totally finished. Now you can see we've got the new springs in. Now what Jerson did is he went and took some ceramic brake pad grease and lubed every contact point, both up here and down below, with grease. And now we have a system that's going to move freely inside that brake rotor and not bind up. So the next step is to install the new rotor, and you notice the rotor is not going on. Well, that's because the shoes need to be adjusted and enter the special tool. This tool can also be used to go in through one of the wheel bolt holes and adjust this star nut so you can collapse and expand the shoes. So after adjusting this, I can go ahead and put the new rotor on, then we're going to install the rebuilt caliper and the new brake hose and brand new uh, quality brake pads. Don't use cheap brake pads when doing these jobs. I mean, one of the reasons I started this job in the first place was way up front there when some previous mechanic improperly installed cheap front brake pads, okay? I can't believe it. You know, I started out with just a light shimmy in the front of this car, and I said, I'm not going to drive the car. That was the third thing I fixed on this car, and it literally turned into a complete system overhaul on the brakes. And that's pretty much the case when you get in these 35, 40-year-old cars. So don't be surprised if you pick up one of these old W123s and need to do some brake work. 80% of the time, you will. Now, in the next video, in in this series, I'm going to go ahead and just show you everything I did on the brake system, all the parts that were replaced, and then I'll just put links in the description below the video if any of you are, are interested in doing this yourself, because most of the parts I sell come with thorough instructions, either PDF manuals or video instructions that will help you 
do the brake work on your old bends yourself and do it successfully. So what I'm going to do for the month of October 2020, I'm going to package the shoes with the toolkit. You know, currently we sell them separately, but I'm going to give you a discount with new shoes and springs, and then I'll give you the toolkit and the, and the supplies that come with the tool, and that will include a very detailed video instruction. So if you wondered about certain things I didn't show in this video, it's because they're all shown in detail in the instructions that come when you purchase our parking brake installation kit with this tool right here.